Hey everybody, John Nelson with Haas Automation here today to talk to you about double station vices. Double station vices allow you to clamp on two separate work pieces at the same time. This works great because you can load two pieces in the vise and get two parts out of the machine with every cycle. Many customers use them for parts that require two operations. They cut operation one in the back station and op two in the front station. This way, you have one completed part come out of the machine with each cycle. We offer four versions of this vise. This one is a six inch wide vise. We offer an identical version that is a 150 millimeter vise. The only difference between the two is the threads for the jaws. They're half 13 on the six inch version and they're M12 by 1.75 on the 150 millimeter version. We do the same with the four inch and 100 millimeter vices. Those threads are 3.8.16 on the four inch version and M10 by one on the 100 millimeter vise. These vices are manufactured in the United States by and co-branded with Kurt Workholding. They consistently locate workpieces with outstanding accuracy and are backed by a lifetime warranty against workmanship and material defects. The Anglock design allows the movable jaw to advance in such a way that each pound of force forward induces a half a pound of force downward. This minimizes the jaw lift and increases accuracy. This, combined with the needle bearings, increases jaw clamping pressure. They also feature an 80,000 PSI ductile iron body, hardened steel bed and jaw plates, and a semi-hard steel screw. Always mount your vise on a flat, clean surface. Make sure the surface and the vise are clean and free of burrs before mounting the vise. We'll put a link in the description below to our tip of the day video about mounting a vise, so check that out. These vices have locating holes that can be used with dowel pins or Kurt Workholding's sign keys. These two holes are 5 8 of an inch and can be used to locate in a T-slot. The T-slots on most Haas mills are 16 millimeters, which is five thousandths of an inch larger than the 5 eighths diameter. We're working on adapter plates for these vices. The double station vise will bolt directly to the plates using these holes through the bed. The plates will have a hole pattern to bolt directly to the T-slot table on Haas machines. You certainly don't need to use these locating holes, but if you're constantly removing and replacing the vise, it will save you some setup time. I'll be clamping this vise to the VF4SS with strap clamps. So here's how the vices work. Rotate the lead screw clockwise to tighten. Both jaws will move inward at the same time. If your parts are different widths, always put the wider part in the back station and the narrower part in the front. As you close the jaws, the rear station will contact the rear part first, and then the front station will continue moving. Once the front jaw makes contact, both jaws will start applying clamp force. When loosening the vise, the front jaw will release first, and then the rear jaw will loosen. The timing, or the amount that one jaw opens before the other starts to move, can be adjusted. Kurt Workholding produced a video with all these details and we'll have that link in the description down below. The vise handle combined with the correct amount of torque will provide all the clamping force you need to machine your parts. Our webpage for these vices has a clamp force chart for your reference. Notice the maximum torque value on the chart is 70 foot pounds. This vise handle is approximately one foot long. So unless you weigh 70 pounds, you don't need to put all your weight on the vise handle. Also, don't use any other type of pressure to open or close the vise. Handle extensions, air impact wrenches, breaker bars, or hammer strikes are not recommended and will void the warranty if used. 
Over tightening will cause damage to the thrust bearings and the screw threads. If you need more clamping force, you likely need a larger vise. For best clamping results, the workpiece should be placed in the center of the vise and resting on the ways of the vise. You should never place a workpiece in the vise with one end not crossing the center line of the vise. Clamping will not be accurate and jaw lift will negatively affect clamp force. If one-sided clamping is necessary, you must use a dummy tool on the other side. Clamping above the movable and stationary jaws will also result in jaw lift or loss of accuracy. When using parallels or step jaws, select a size that keeps the bottom of the clamped part at or below the top of the movable and stationary jaws. Now, I always thought of these as jaws and this as the movable part of the vise. I've come to find out that the manufacturer refers to these as jaw plates and these as jaws. Regardless of the terminology, you should never use the vise without jaw plates installed. Doing so will result in damage to the mounting surface of the movable and stationary jaws. This will result in reduced clamping accuracy and repeatability. As I mentioned before, if clamping parts of different widths in this direction, place the smaller part in the front station and the larger part in the back station. If you only want to use one side of the double station vise, you must use a dummy block in the other station. You can't just close one jaw against the center stationary jaw. Typically, you'll use the front jaw because it's easier to reach, but regardless of which side you choose to hold the part and which side you insert the dummy block, the larger material must go in the back station. This vise can also be converted to a large single station vise. Order a conversion kit from Kirk Workholding that bolts the rear jaw to the back of the vise, making it a stationary jaw. Then, Remove the center stationary jaw and the front jaw is now the only moving jaw. If the opening distance of the front station and the back station become unequal and you want to sync them up again, simply open the jaws all the way. As soon as you feel tension on the lead screw stop, now as you close the jaws, they'll be synced up again. The Kurt Workholding operating instruction manuals are now posted on our site for each of these products. The manuals will have some more specific operating instructions, including maintenance schedules and troubleshooting tips. And finally, my good friend Mark Terryberry and our video team produced an outstanding tip of the day video on milling soft jaws. We'll have a link in the description below, so be sure to check that one out too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.